What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Johnny Mac here. Just wanted to give you a heads up that if you are looking for a community that is open to discussion as far as mentorship, conservation, the wild, becoming a better person, and all of that, there is a group for you on Facebook, and it is called Soul Seekers. Soul Seekers, we are all about making ourselves a better person. We're all about making sure hunting lasts for generations to come and encouraging people to get plugged in. Whether you are someone who has something to give or someone who needs to soak it up like a sponge, this is a community for you and I encourage you, I strongly encourage you that if you're on Facebook to join Soul Seekers and if you're not on Facebook, hop on there just for that group. It is only gonna be as powerful as we all make it. And so just remember that life happens for you, it doesn't happen to you, and that you can't outgive good. You can't outgive good, people. I want you to understand that, and I want you to believe it, because when we believe that and we lead with courage and we lead with intention, lives are changed, lives are transformed, just like on this podcast, Transformation Through Primal Adventure. Be blessed. Enjoy this episode. Talk soon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship is conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by the Crazy Elk Company. Based out of the state of Washington with products made in America, they are providing solutions with gear to problems you didn't even know you had. Their tag wall is one of those solutions, and I had the pleasure of using it on all of my hunts this last year, and it is now a mainstay in my kill kit. The tag wall is a water-resistant zippered pouch that comes with its own reusable zip ties to safely and securely store your notch tag for quick and easy access. For more information, go to crazyelkcompany.com and use the code SOULFUL with a capital S to save 20% at checkout. Be blessed, everyone, and as always, stay soulful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soulful Hunter Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack, and I'm joined by the one and only Iron Will Weber. What's up, Iron? What's going on, J Mack? Dude, just hanging out, hanging out with my good buddy and my dog. Having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Have a little, a little glass of whiskey, a little, little glass bourbon. of whiskey, some bourbon. I like to drink bourbon because it's American. It's like champagne is to France, bourbon is to bourbon is to America. Hell yeah, it's, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, as we are divulging <laughs> and uh, d- diving into the the world of what it is to be American. Let's pivot here and let's talk about today's episode. Today's episode, first of all, is brought to you by the Crazy Elk Company and their tag wallet. And if you guys have not had an opportunity to check out a tag wallet, go do so. You're missing out. It's like $5, $6, $7, super cheap. It is cheap. And you can save 20% by using the code SOULFUL with the capital S. Save 20% and go add that to your kill kit. Buy them for all your hunting friends and give them away as Christmas gifts this next December. Great stocking stuffers. Or just give them out because you love people because you can't outgive good. Yeah. Right? Just, hey, I was thinking about you. This is something that you'll like to use. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Caring is sharing. Yeah. Caring is sharing. Sharing is caring. There we go. And with that being said, let's talk about sharing. This episode is one that has been long in coming, but we are recording it now because it's applicable to you specifically, Will. Okay. Because you're new to the game. Yeah. You are going into, you, from this date, roughly right now, you've been a hunter for, you've made the decision to become a hunter like two calendar years. Two calendar years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was about... uh 
I don't know, 30 days ago or so, two years ago that I called Johnny Mac for the first time. Yeah, I said, I want to learn how to hunt. Yep. Okay, so with that being said, what we're going to talk about is the Ranella article. The Ooh. Matt Ranella article that was posted on Free Range American. Yep. And it was all about social media. And it's it's uh, his... His take on it, but I want to get your take on it. And really, mm. you know, because social media is a beast. Of it, is a beast. it is a beast. There's a lot of pros. There's a lot of cons. Mm-hmm. I actually posted something on social media that someone ripped me on recently mm-hmm. for a story. I think you saw that. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah no, I saw the message come in on that one. Yeah. And I didn't respond, but. Right. It's. uh. So it's weird. Everyone has their own opinion. They do. And some people you don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know that person. Um, but I mean, all the other exchanges seem pretty friendly from that individual up until that post. Yeah, you never know how people are going to take something. Right. And in fairness, if you put it out there on social media. Be prepared for the consequences. Yeah, consequences, opinions. Whatever you want to call it. Feedback. Feedback. We'll, it's, we'll it's go all, with ev- feedback. Everything's feedback. It's it's not a consequence if you don't care. Feedback's neither negative nor positive. It just is. It's, you're infor- welcome, it's information. You're welcoming somebody's feedback. Yep. Well, yeah. we don't have to welcome it, but it's feedback regardless. Well, yeah. <laughs> Open door. <laughs> okay, so, so the whole premise of this episode today is to talk about social media and its role within hunting, and whether it's good, bad, indifferent, or or whatever. Yeah. So if you guys have not read, is it Matt Ranella? Is his brother? Still? Matt Ranella. So what I would recommend that people do, um, I did do both. Um, I could stand to do both again. I did it a little while ago, so the freshness of it isn't 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 right there but um matt ranella they released that article on free range america and then he also did uh the meat eater podcast with his brother steve and they did like a recap segment on that episode the episode was not dedicated to that Mm -hmm. but they spent a chunk on it him and steve and steve's gang and, that, and by the way, Discussing for all it. you listeners who are like, what article? I'm going to actually link in the show notes uh, to this yeah. article on Free Range American. So this was published December 20th. So it's a couple months ago. Yeah. Man, we are late to the game, bro. Yeah, it was very, uh, it was kind of based around the whole uh, R3. Yeah. Um, do you know what R3 stands for? I do, but you'd be a little bit better at explaining it. Recruitment? Yeah. Retainment and reactivation. Yes. So recruiting new hunters, yep. retaining current hunters, yes. and reactivating former hunters. R3. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. I appreciate it. It's <laughs> looking at my notes, you know. Um, but it was kind of centered around that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and social media is... Um, either positive, negative, or like you said, indifferent impact on that. And there's a lot to unpack in, in Matt's views on this. Um, but he, I don't, let's do this. We, don't unpack Matt's views. I'm not going to unpack I wanna, Matt's I views. I want to unpack your views because right. I, I can speak to this specifically because Washington backcountry and the Soulful Hunter podcast mm-hmm. and Soul Seekers and everything yeah. – that has come from my desire to want to learn how to hunt. Yeah. Has all stemmed from social media. Agree. From creating a, an Instagram account. And it is how we deliver a lot of that to individuals. Information and content. It is. Not that everything's educational. Not at all. We cuz I will I will say that we at Washington Backcountry, Soulful Hunter and everything we would take in person with people, community, events, meeting up, natural, organic stuff over yep. social media all oh, day. Totally. If Instagram 
Facebook, yeah. Twitter, all that stuff just shut down. Actually, this fall, yeah, Facebook went down and Instagram went down for they like crashed, 24 yeah. hours or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I called two shot and I was like, dude, I'm so thankful right now. <laughs> I, I hope it doesn't come back. <laughs> it came back. Yeah. Um, so that's how I feel now, being in the game for a while. However, you, in your perspective, who hasn't been in the game for a while, if you didn't have it, do you think your hunting opportunities would not be as large? I do not think that... I think that my opportunities have partially been presented by some connections and or stuff I've seen on social media. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it's played an influence in my, in my opportunity. It's played an influence in my abilities. I mean, essentially, could I have met Johnny Mac some other way? Yes, I could have, but I met Johnny Mac through social media. That is true. Right. I added Washington Backcountry. You reached out. We messaged on Instagram, and then I got your phone number right away, and we called and talked, and the rest is, is history there. Here I am in the fold, posted on social media for Washington Backcountry. So it's <laughs> – You whispered that. You guys, uh, I, listeners, I'm, if you follow Washington Backcountry on yeah. Instagram, try to figure out who's posting, me, Two Shot, or Will. Yeah. Take, make it a send, fun send us a message let us know if you could tell who's <laughs> who's making certain posts and right okay so game so you're right so if it wasn't for social media but that is how i got introduced to you yeah as a newer hunter and i don't even i i don't know what accounts you follow sure do you see a lot of positivity in social media a lot of negativity and we're talking hunting social media mm -hmm. we're not talking political sure or, you know, yeah. whatever Instagram or stuff you used to be used mm -hmm. for back in the day. Like, look at the picture of my yeah. food on my plate. What do you think? Me, personally, I believe that uh, I think negativity that's taken from it, I think, is in the eye of the beholder. I think that those who view in the hunting industry and I'm not talking about like a video that somebody disagrees with because like a story that somebody doesn't agree with or something. I'm not talking about that, but in general posts in the hunting industry, I believe those who believe that, Oh, that's a negative post. It's because they're looking at it and having an attitude of like a, Oh, must be nice. Hmm. Wish I could do that. You know, you and I record, you can do that. You and I recorded a podcast not too long ago. And we talked about how life is just a reflection yeah, of our own self. Tying it into what you just said and the whole Cam Haynes must be nice yeah. thing is, right, oh, I don't get to do that. Must yeah. be nice. And it's like, stop being a pity party. Go earn it. Put earn, the work in. Earn everything. Put the work in. What? Who? Who cares what? I mean, and I think he would agree. Who cares what Cam Haynes is doing? Yeah. I like watching him shoot his bow. I like listening to some of his stuff. I think the guy's funny. I don't, but who cares? I don't look at that or other people on there like Steve Rinella and stuff. I took a lot of inspiration from Steve Rinella. I love his show. I think he's an awesome dude. I loved, before I knew you, I watched Meat Eater. It's right. like, that looks cool. Right. But I never had the opinion of, oh, must be real nice to just be in that position to be able to do that or do this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all toxicity, right? Like, people who, like the fitness industry, right. for instance. Right. A lot of people think that the content that fitness people put out is so toxic because it gives people these negative body images and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that it doesn't. And that is stuff that really matters. And people, I know people who have dealt with stuff um, regarding body image and other things. Like, that stuff goes on. I'm not going against that i'm just saying that we all have a choice at the end of the day what we choose to follow what we choose to put our brain power into what we choose to put our eyes on it's like i don't follow anything on social media that i don't want to follow ah ownership <laughs> if i don't want to follow it i don't follow it 
Do you ever go through accounts and unfollow them? Yeah, once a week. You do? Yeah. And people who follow me, who I'm like, clearly that's just like a spam account or something like that. Because you get a lot of randoms that are, they have nothing to do with. Like, I can safely say that when I look at some of them, like, you're not coming to my page to see hunting content. Like, you're just yeah, adding a person or whatever. See you later. I mean. Sayonara. So I believe that the negativity, I think by whole, I think most of the stuff that comes out of the hunting industry is pretty good. Hmm. I do. Do you think that there, you know, and you and I, we talked with uh, Jason Matzinger. Yeah. Uh, good dude. At the Hunt Expo about this. Yeah. Anti hunters mm -hmm. and the anti hunting crowd is so offensive. And when I say offensive, I mean they're always on the offense. They're offensive. They're offended. They're offended, but offensive yes. too. Like, they're quick to attack. They're on the offense. Yeah, we're not going after them for for being anti-hunting, but they are definitely always coming after us. And so one of the things that we talked about was like there's certain content that you can and cannot release because of how it's going to be viewed and right. paint hunting in a negative light. Mm -hmm. I really struggle with this because... And I refer always back to the account Nature is Metal on Instagram. Great account. Great account. It is. It's real life, and life mm -hmm. is not perfect. It is not. Life and death is dirty, confusing, convoluted, rough, mm -hmm. bloody, yeah. crippling. I can go on. And are we painting a real picture or are we painting a half truth? Right. Is this glass of bourbon that I'm holding half full or half empty? Right. It's all in the perspective. It is. The eye of the beholder. Yeah, and I think part of that conversation and, and part of what we touched on, like where you're going with that, is this idea of fueling anti-hunters with ammunition mm -hmm. posting something that is not favorable to what we do hunting conservation putting meat in the freezer things like that it goes bad or there are some bad eggs don't get me wrong there are people out there who are by nature maybe not very good individuals um you know not putting something out there because it would paint what we do in a bad light even though it happened it's so interesting. You ever heard, the, you, know, I'm, you ever heard, you've heard this, the saying, and not going racial, but the concept of you people. Yeah. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Yeah. You people. So going like the bad apples, right? Yeah. So a bad apple can ru ruin the whole bunch. Yeah. It spreads. It's cancer. Spoils. It spoils. Mm -hmm. But here we are. In a world that claims to not want labels. Right. Just labeling everybody. Right. That drives me nuts. I agree. It drives me nuts, too. Like, okay, put me in a box. Mm -hmm. But you better stamp me guaranteed. <laughs> right. 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 I don't know. I just, and I say I don't know because I don't actually know what is right, what is wrong, other than just being true to yourself. Then, if you want it posted on social media, mm -hmm. would you then therefore do it? Mm. It's an interesting question, right? It is an interesting question, and I'm sure the answer is different for everybody. Right. Some may, some may not. Some may be indifferent to it. I mean, there's a lot of really great hunters out there that are not on social media. A lot. True. And there's also a lot of really, I mean, I guess, can you say a bad hunter? Yeah. No. So, no. 
You can't say a bad hunter. Yeah. Can you say a bad hunter? Bad representation of... I mean, every, that's the thing, is where do you draw the line? This is where I always go back where to gets the concept of like education. Yeah. Being a school teacher, I can pull from this all the time. There are what's called state standards. Right. There's national standards. What is standard? Right. What is what is a standard? The average, the sum, the you know, like because if I said, okay, this is the standard in which you're going to be judged, viewed, um, evaluated. Who set that? Who, who sets the standard? Who sets the standard? So what? So therefore, this is going real philosophical. Yeah, but get it, dude. Get it. But this is the point. Is like, and maybe I, maybe I'm a little nihilistic at times, <laughs> right? You you know, I I obviously have trust issues. We've talked about this before. <laughs> but like, what does anything really matter then? Right. People always say, "Oh, I don't care about what other people think." But you do. But you do. But you do. Yes. Otherwise, you would let it all hang out. Right. Or you just wouldn't let anything hang out. Right. Because you want to just keep it to yourself. And at the end of the day, are you, what are you posting on social media for? What is your why Mm -hmm. are you posting on social media? My why has personally changed over the years. Sure. You answer your why, and I'll I'll give you mine as well because you're in a different position. Sure. What's your why? I post little on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, I do actually have. See, that's the thing is, it's like at the point what I can answer my own question, and then I can turn around and I say, yeah, but there's other ways to send that to family members and do things, so why post it on social media? Mm -hmm. Um, I do have some family members who scroll through social media, and they message me all the time about stuff that I post on there or whatnot and use it as a tool to catch up or as like a, what would you call it, like a like a photo album or something like that of things I got going on. Memories pop up that are pretty cool. Um, But I have been guilty of using it for not clicks because I don't get hardly anything on mine. I'm just new in the game. But, um, you know, to throw – I do throw support to some companies or products that uh, I have bought and I use. Um, I don't get anything in return, but – I I own small business, so I appreciate small businesses, and I appreciate guys who put in hard work and create something that's that's craftsman and is uh, you know superior to other products and stuff. So I know that they're on there. I do use it as a tool to help support their business, and like a Google review or a Yelp review or anything like that. People do click on that. Hmm. Um, Okay, let me ask you this, because you haven't gotten to this point in your career yet. Sure. Pride. And this goes back to, like, mm-hmm. the Matt Ranella article. Mm-hmm. How much of it is are you posting for the look at me? Look look at what I've done. I'm I'm a hunter now. The attaboys? Y- yeah, but maybe, you know, maybe it's not even attaboys. It's like... <laughs> Why do we have a mount? Why did, why did I shoulder mount my elk? Right? I will admit that, yeah, I mean, if you look at it that way, I could probably scroll through my few social media posts, and pretty much every post that I've made was a proud moment for me. Mm-hmm. Be it with my sons, my wife, special event I went to, um, my first big game kill. Yeah. I've posted a lot of things that at the time I was proud of at that moment. So we are inherently prideful humans. Yeah. We're, we're filled with ego. Mm-hmm. And by the way, there's no right or wrong. This no, is I know e- there's not. Everyone yeah. gets their own individual story. However, I will say this. I don't like hunting alone. I don't either. I like hunting with friends. I like hunting with people. I like sharing experiences 
with other people. Yeah. So when I post on social media, I am hallmarking mm. an experience mm-hmm. that I love. And I'm sharing it. And it is, you could call it prideful. Sure. But I'm going to challenge and say, I really like what I do. Mm -hmm. And I believe that inspired people inspire people. Yeah. And whether it's through my photography, my videography, Mm -hmm. my captions yeah. or whatever it is for the eyes of other people yeah but it's never for the eyes of other people that makes sense to me it's for me but yeah. why i created my social media was specifically to connect with other people to reach other people i would i would i would agree with that you know we you know, our mission's mentorship is conservation. And I believe in the mission I have since my first hunt ever with you. I've been locked in on that. And I believe it so deeply in my heart. It changed my life. So you talk about reaching people. You reached me. Tony reached me. People you've connected with have in turn touched me. Um... And I got in the fold and doing all this and, and putting my, my journey, living testimony, mm-hmm. putting it out there for people because I believe that I have the ability to impact somebody's life the way that mine was impacted. Seeing my journey with you guys and somebody seeing me having all these the Hunt Expo, everything, having these amazing experiences for the first time by being vulnerable. You know, as we're sitting here recording this, it's like my why is changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always evolving. Social media for me has been a vulnerability tool. Yeah. Dude, I get so nervous to post any sort of video where it's me in the moment. And just realizing that it's like I've put out vulnerable moments. I've put out stuff and shared stuff that like, I just, it's part of the journey. Like being vulnerable, putting myself out there, putting myself in uncomfortable situations. So growth is supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. It is. Yeah. But that's the beauty of the entire process. So constantly doing things like that is is part of that journey for me. Mm Mm-hmm. Beautiful. It's a double-edged sword. It is, because you can also reevaluate as you're sitting here trying to portray, you know, like I just learned that about myself, that it's a vulnerability tool. Like it's part of my process that I set out for two years ago, and I'm going to continue on that journey and be intentional about it. Um, But you can sit there and you can see both sides. You can see... You know, a lot of positives from social media mm-hmm. in any industry. It doesn't have to be the hunting industry. We just happen to be in that. But it's it's everywhere. There's, But I find that everything that is either a negative and or a positive, I can also, in the same light, find the counter to that. Well, that's what we talk about. It's an and life. It's not a yeah. or, it's not an or life or a but life. It's, like it can be this and it can be that yeah. at the same time. And I don't want to get off, you know, totally off the, the soulful part of this, but just like using some points is like Matt Ranella speaks about how one of his biggest gripes about the R3 movement and all that other stuff is that, you know, public land hunting, the trailheads are completely overflowed with new hunters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm a new hunter. Right. I'm one of those people at the trailhead. I'm not doing it for clicks. I'm doing it because I want to. Mm-hmm. Because I want my sons to if they want to. Because I want to be something for them. Because 
I want to put out there and I want to inspire somebody else to do it. I want to inspire somebody and it doesn't have to be hunting. What is, what do you want to do? What is something you want to do that you're not taking the step to do? Yes. You can do it. Put yourself out there. Feel uncomfortable. So you can grow. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. It is. It's, um, you know, one of the other things that, that Matt really talked about in the article was he didn't like how it's the term hunting industry. Mm. Because purists. Yes. Or I would I would say purists are not capitalists. <laughs> in, okay, in, yeah. In typical, you know, sure. fashion is because a capitalist is looking to make money off of things. Yes. Right? And... And I look at everything as a full circle, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Extreme capitalism is evil. Yes. Because it leads to um, the, the, the ex exploitation of people. Mm -hmm. Capitalism exploits people. Mm -hmm. It exploits things to an, an extreme degree. But then again, so does the concept of socialism and communism, yes. where you will own nothing and you'll like it, yes. leads you to the same direction. Mm -hmm. It's all one big circle. Right. Right? So the concept about hunting, the hunting industry and social media is that everything is advertisement. Sure. Influencers. Yeah. Ambassadors. I like that word. I can't stand the term influencer or ambassador. Uh-uh. Ambassador for hunting, yeah, love it. Ambassador yes. for a product or a company, not a fan of. Mm -mm. I so we work with Cryptech. Yes, I will. You and I were going to be doing an episode uh, coming up talking specifically about all the Cryptech gear that we like and yes. that we use. That's a company I stand behind. I 100%. stand. I stand for. Stand with. Out of all the different companies that I could have gotten in bed with, yep. I specifically sought out Cryptech. We share values. Yes. Initial scent backpacks. Yes. It's Again. Another, another one of them. Yes. Okay. Onyx Hunt, Onyx yes. Maps, has supported me in my journey. Yes. To the point where I want to support them. Yeah. It, it is, and through the mission of Mentorship is Conservation, I'm going to push their product because it was a absolute game changer. I didn't know that the same lands that I was hiking on were the same lands I could hunt on. Correct. Vortex Optics. Another great one. They are a phenomenal company. Yes. Whether or not you really like their glass is irrelevant. The, co the company, the values that they stand on, and their whole team. Quality people. Great people. Yeah. Love it. And they were the very first ones to like really hammer home like this unlimited warranty. Yeah. And then yeah. other companies started to follow after it. And they mean it. Yes. So much. So like here we go. So we're talking about, you know, capitalism within hunting. Yeah. And the purists. Mm -hmm. Like, ah. Oh. Like, and this is the the shake your finger. Like, how dare you? Mm-hmm. You're, you're tainting this for us. Yeah. It's good to have ownership of something. But what I do know is that if you truly love something, you let it go. Mm -hmm. And if it's meant to come back to you, yes, it'll come back to you. Yes. You ever, you ever been in a really bad relationship? And I say bad because you really liked a girl so much. Mm -hmm. You just didn't want her to break up with you. Oh yeah. Like, no, no, I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. What what can did it work out? No. No. Because when you try to hold on to something, yeah, it naturally wants to squirm out of your hands. Yes. So when you love with open arms, mm -hmm. unconditional, and love is unconditional. Love the the term unconditional love is a slap in the face to the word love because love is con is always unconditional. Unconditional. Yes. But when we talk about this and, and apply it to the hunting realm and the, the industries and the capitalism and the influencers, mm -hmm. speaking to the purists, is purists 
from my perspective, they get so offended because they're holding on to something so tight. Oh, it's not how it used to be. You're ruining it for us. How dare you? Versus, you know, they always say hunters are the last people to change. Like the hunting industry will always be like 10 to 15 years behind the rest of the world because it's the, I did it this way because my grandpa did it this way because yeah, yeah, his yeah, grandpa yeah. did it this way and this is just the way we do it. <laughs> yeah, I know all about that. So what what's your take on all that? My take is that I think change is inherently good. Mm. And life is about adaptation. All of life is about adapting. Life is constantly changing. Your surroundings are constantly changing. People are constantly evolving. Just go with the flow, man. You want to hear a quote? Be you. Be true to who you are. Be authentic. Don't waver on your beliefs, what your heart tells you, anything like that. And just stop worrying about what other people are doing. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some, some knowledge bombs of quotes and metaphors right here. Drop it. Okay. Dropping it like it's hot. The minute that you are in balance is the minute that you're out of balance. You ever heard that before? Mm-mm. Okay, so like super zen. Sure. Like, like the minute that you finally find that balance, you're like, yeah, I'm in balance. I got it. I got it figured out with my children, my work, my wife. Everything's all, perfect. Everything's perfect is the minute you're out of balance. So like it's this funny, weird, symbiotic relationship where we're figuring it out and it's a continuation. It's not linear. It is, it is this journey, right? And so the other thing is I always come back to this as a saying where you are either green and growing. Mm, I have heard this. Or one you probably. are ripe and rotting. It's the produce man in you. I used to be a produce man. <laughs> so you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. Yeah. Because once you've reached that peak, mm -hmm. you're working your way towards death. And yes. it's really funny. And I, I think that's very applicable to the hunting realm because – if hunters are all about the circle of life and mm -hmm. life brings death and death brings life and the yin and the yang and it's just how life goes. Yes. Then you would understand that how you did it 30 years ago it's not how you is do it not today. how you do it today. Not and not because of a should. Right. It is you may not have changed in your own mind. Right. But the world around you has shifted. Spitting facts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, you know, I, I like to garden. My fruits and vegetables, they grow. The soil didn't change. Mm -mm. The sun is always out each and every day. Maybe it's behind clouds or whatever, but. Yeah, not here in Washington. So, what, so what's really changing? It's the seasons. Yes. Now, now all of a sudden the weather's changing. So. If we apply that to the hunters, mm -hmm. the people in this world, and social media, so we go full circle here and posting on social media, just because it's not your cup of tea doesn't mean it's not still producing fruit and good fruit at that. Amen. Because if life is a reflection of us, mm -hmm. if we are viewing this Social media, this capitalism, this advertising. Right. Then are you looking at it with a green and growing attitude? Yeah. Or a ripe and rotting attitude? Yes. Because that is the difference maker between how you use mm -hmm. social media. Yeah. The, the, the purpose, the intent mm -hmm. behind it. And... I don't even know what to say after that. I feel like that is... I would say that just to add to that, consequently, in reverse, would play a role in how you view social media as well. Like, what your perspective when you're looking through social media is. Right. If you're posting with that type of mentality, that type of intent, the green and growing 
mm-hmm. mentality, mm-hmm. then you're also receiving social media. Well, with that, it's really funny. You and I, when we were at the Hunt Expo, and I was like, "Man, I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry. I could go for Chick Fil A." Yeah. And then I checked my email, and all of a sudden, I got a Chick Fil A email. And you're uh. like, "Your cell phones are listening to you." <laughs> Well, if the concept of social media and cell phones yeah. and technology is really listening to you, mm-hmm. if we are in, let's go full on AI mode, which yeah. AI sucks. I, I'm anti AI. Yeah. For all you AI fans out there, just know that. Yeah, we're standing hard on that. I, line. I, that's a hard line I draw. Okay. But with that being said, if AI is reading you, then it's only reading what you're putting out. Therefore, it's only delivering to you what you're thinking, what you're showing, what you want, what you want. Mm -hmm. So this life is a mirror. Social media is a mirror. What you get in this world is a mirror. Yes. Then what are you putting out? And this goes back to the extreme ownership of who you are and what you want. Absolutely. If you are only focusing on the glass half empty, then you're only going to get perspectives of that glass pretty good, being half empty. Pretty good chance your glass is half empty. Right. Yeah. Unless you're like uh, Dimitri Martin, the comedian, where he's like, you know, this is not a glass of water. It's a glass of baby's blood. Sure. And he's like, why would a glass be half full of baby's blood or half empty? Is it going to a baby? Is it coming from? That's a really deep, dark hole right there. But look him up. Look him. Up. Have you ever seen that comedy skit? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll we'll cue it up. I definitely didn't do it any favors right there. The point <laughs> is, is like what are, <laughs> what are you viewing it as? Yeah. Right. So, so my take is this: How do you want social media to be used in your life? I view it as a tool in my tool belt to connect with other people. And it is. And to further connect my desire to want to learn how to hunt more. Yes. And it has. And with that comes me coming out with different platforms, whether it's Carbon TV and Soul Seekers or a YouTube channel or Mm -hmm. a podcast or a Twitter account or Instagram, like... It's all just another avenue as a conduit. It is a conduit. To reach people. Yes. Or have them reach you. And it's a lot easier. And this is one thing I did not say earlier. Talking about, like, why did I mount my elk? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is social media is a resume. Mm. This is what, what, and, and, and here's. The funny thing about this is, like, we talked earlier about it being a pride thing. Yeah. You know, well, you're showing the moments in which you're really proud of. Mm -hmm. Correct. And what is a resume for? Yeah, you're proud of it. You're proud of it. It's accomplishments. And what do you do with a resume? What's the purpose of it? Sell other people. On who? You. Bingo. Yeah. You are selling yourself. Yeah. Which ties me back into the whole influencer role mm. and all this other stuff is the fact that if humans understood that everything that they do, they're always selling themselves. Yeah. Not prostituting yourselves. Right. Connecting yourselves with right. humanity. Yeah. In whatever fashion you want. So if you're using it as an opportunity, as a resume, like for today, I was talking to a loan, a loan guy for yeah. a, a mortgage on a house. And I asked him if he hunted. And he said, oh, yeah, huge, big time, love it. Yeah. I don't own golf clubs. I don't do anything else. It's hunting and fishing. And then I started to tell him what I do. And all of a sudden, he was like, oh, man. Really? You ain't kidding. Whoa. And I was like, sweet. It is a resume. It is. It opens doors. So... Now, looking at the flip of it, mm-hmm. what do you want to put on your resume? Yeah. What, are you, what do you want to post on your resume? And that's up to you. Do you post for a personal reflection of you? 
Are you posting for a reflection of hunting? Mm. What are you posting for? Good question. There's no right or wrong answer. There's not. Other than you need to understand your ownership of what you're doing. And own it. And own it. Because yeah. what's up on the internet never goes away. Somebody's got it somewhere. I know. Screenshots. Really scares me from my younger, more immature days. Something might come back to haunt you. Lord God, may that never happen. <laughs> Johnny Max, legit, guys. Just <laughs> whatever you see out there. I hope... I hope it's good. Anyways, Will, what do you think of that? That's a pretty deep conversation right here. It is. And at the end of the day, everybody, do with it what you want. Right. Be with who you want to be with and be what you want to be. Yeah. Live and let live, right? Freedom on. We we believe in that. Live and let live. Be just... Social media is interesting, man. Yeah. And no two people are necessarily doing it for the same reason. No, definitely not. And it shifts. Momentum shifts. Your why is shift. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. My why shifted in this episode. Bingo. All right. So what, what is, uh, what's some of your takeaways right now? Let's recap this bad boy. Well, Putting you on the spot there, silent will. Nah, it's all good, man. I mean, my takeaways are, it's a tool for me. It's a tool. It's a tool for me. Yeah. It's a tool in the tool belt. And you know what? Nobody ever said anything negative about making sure you got every tool in your tool belt. Right? Like in my business, I tell my employees, listen, I don't care. If you need a tool to make your job better, tell me what tool you need, and I'll go get you that tool. Going to a neighbor and being like, hey, do you have this tool? Can I borrow it? Yeah. Sucks. It does. It's awesome to have a neighbor that has everything, yeah. but the point is, is like, yeah, it's a tool in your tool belt. It's a tool in the tool belt. Just like guns. If you guys are, are on the fence about guns and, like, you know, semi-automatics, mm. uh, ARs, Ar- Armalite rifles, not assault rifles. That's not a correct term. Yeah, get it straight. Everything is a tool to be used for specific applications. You can't do everything with a flathead screwdriver. You can't do everything with a hammer. You got to have yeah. different tools for different jobs, and each job is different. So that's a little Second Amendment rant right there for I was you. just going to say, by the way, people, we are Second Amendment folk over here pro, so pro freedom we're pro freedom all the way all right will love it love you you're awesome everybody who's listening to this episode you are awesome we love you too we love you we want the best for you if you got questions comments concerns considerations compliments go ahead and drop them in the dm slide on up in there you can also leave a message by going to wabackcountry.com or soulfulhunter.com mm-hmm. and clicking on the contact us page. Drop us an email. Let us know what you think of the episodes. Go share this episode, like it, subscribe it, all that, because it helps get the word out, because the word is mentorship is conservation, and hunting has the power to transform lives through primal adventure. Will, you look like you wanted to say something right there. I was just going to tell people, be sure and go give us a follow. Like, tag, subscribe. Yeah. Check us out. You never know who you're going to reach by helping us reach people. Totally. You conduit. Can't. We're all conduit to each other. Yep. You can't outgive good. You can't outgive good. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in this episode. Go check out Crazy Elk Company. Go pick up a tag wallet. Use the code SOULFUL with a capital S. Save 20% at checkout. Be blessed, everybody. Know that life is happening for you, not to you. Freedom on. And as always, stay soulful. Stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. 
Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter Podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter Podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful.